Welcome to the Military Meditation Coach. I'm Dr. Julie Kinn with the DOD's Defense Health Agency. I'm here with Commander Jeffrey Milligan, Director of the Naval Center for Combat and Operational Stress Control, also known as NCCOSC. I'm very excited to be here, Julie. Me too, because today we'll be telling our listeners about the Military Meditation Coach podcast series, how you can use it for your own use or in the clinic setting. Well, why don't we get started, Commander Milligan? How did you come up with the idea for the Military Meditation Coach? We have been running a mind-body medicine program at Naval Medical Center San Diego since 2013, which is designed to get people mentally fit through regular meditation to build their resiliency and their ability to manage stress in a healthy and functional way. The big key is that people to be successful with this program is regular work, very similar to jogging, very similar to lifting weights. The way you get better is not by doing it once, but having a regular practice. Meditation, although seems Simple on the surface, as far as a repetitive focus, as far as staying in a non-judgmental awareness while you do it, is very challenging. It's very hard to sit there in one moment for an extended period of time. And also, it's very intimidating. And I think that's why, for the most part, people who've practiced meditation have done it in temple settings, in organized religion settings, because it provides a structure and it provides a discipline for what you're doing. We wanted to have a way to create that same level of guidance and ability to have someone mentor you through it. And really, honestly, the smartphone has been the most amazing invention to me for meditation since temples, because now we have the ability to have someone, wherever you go, have someone guide you through a full meditation for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and keep you on task because it's a recording. They're going to continue to go forward, and your job is just to follow them. And recordings are perfect for meditation because in the end, meditation is about repetition. It's about keeping yourself in the moment. And so having a recording help you do that and just be repetitive is exactly what people need. And so for someone who's starting out, simply knowing that all I have to do is close my eyes, have some attitude of open awareness, and then just simply follow the prompts of whoever's leading me through a meditation until they're done is very freeing and specifically helps you stay on task to do a extended period of time because you don't have to check your watch. You don't have to keep on looking at the clock. You just know when this person who's leading you through a meditation is done, you're done. And so that's critical. Now, the other big piece of this is There's a lot of opportunities out there now for people to download various meditations. There's meditation apps offered commercially. Uh, Those cost money, and that can be a problem for getting buy-in among our military population. But more importantly, you want something that they can listen to offline, something that's on their phone. Some of the recordings we're going to have during this series are three minutes long, and some are 40 minutes long, and there are a whole variety of styles. Sounds like you're saying, try it out, see what works for you, and then when you find one that works, use it multiple times. It doesn't need to be just a one-time use. It's really about repetition. Absolutely. Now, what we wanted to do more than anything else through this meditation coach is we wanted to serve a particular gap. There are so many ways to meditate well. There's not just one way, one size fits all. Okay, next question. How does meditation, mindfulness, and relaxation help our service members and civilians too? For a lot of folks, mind-body medicine isn't something they pair with military health. We're very good as military members with physical fitness, and we understand the need for it. We understand the need to be able to be ready to exert our bodies in very difficult settings at a moment's notice, to climb that ladder, to run a long distance, carrying heavy weights, to be able to be ready to be there for their buddy in the moment of need. Much the same way we need our mental facilities. And we need it now, Julie, more than ever, because we're asking our people to do very stressful tasks and activities on a regular basis that require a lot of mental acuity, mental 
focus and the ability to separate your emotional response from what you're doing. You can get very wrapped up emotionally and lose sight of what's really important as far as making good choices. Probably the best example of that is you have someone on a patrol and he, is to, he has to make huge decisions in the moment. Is this person someone who's trying to kill me or not? If they are, I need to defend myself and act accordingly. Or this could be someone who simply seems suspicious, but is just simply a local civilian trying to do their own go, go their own way. And they have to make a very quick decision in that moment. And that could have major strategic implications for our entire government. And this allows someone through regular focused work on their mind to allow their mind to be able to work the way they want it to work ideally. So your ability to go in this moment, I need to be able to distinguish friend from foe. I can do that in a normal setting, but when I get stressed out, my brain starts to function less acutely because it gets stressed out. But by doing regular meditation, you're able to increase the endurance of the mind. So in that moment, you can be aware of your your stressful feelings, aware of your emotions, and be able to put it in its proper place so you can still make those very important, quick cognitive decisions in the way that you feel is best for you, best for your values, and best for the mission that you're, you're currently involved in. It's also so incredibly important for people who deploy in the Navy, who go on small ships and don't necessarily have access to a counselor or even a chaplain, and still want to be able to maintain their deployment be successful due to their own personal goals, their professional goals, but might feel overwhelmed in the moment because it's a 24-7 environment. There's not much room for error, and you can also have a lot of social strain or feel isolated. And in that environment, you can start to feel that your situation is hopeless. But if you have the ability to be able to see the bigger picture, to constantly allow yourself to remember why you're there, what your purpose is in the moment, and be able to really believe that, it can lead to increased resilience for the sailor. And a big part of that is just simply having the ability in the moment to be able to recognize when you're becoming overwhelmed and then being able to take the steps necessary at that point to be able to allow yourself to manage that moment in a healthier way. Last question. Who made these recordings? Who are the presenters we're going to be hearing? What you're going to get is recordings made by our own military health system team, essentially people who have come forward, who I've worked with, who are known as being people who are very experienced with various meditative modalities, who out of the goodness of their heart have volunteered their time and their, their voice to be able to pro provide a recording of a set meditation. And so what you'll hear are we meditative recordings that come directly out of our own military health system team. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Commander Milligan. Oh, thank you very much. We're interested in hearing back from you all, too. Please let us know what kind of meditation, mindfulness, and relaxation exercises you enjoy. You can get in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter at Military Health. The Military Meditation Coach podcast is produced by the Navy Center for Combat and Operational Stress Control and the Defense Health Agency. The views expressed here are those of the presenters and do not reflect the official policy of the Department of Defense or the United States government.